Hello guys and welcome back to the Good Against Evil tournament for BFME 2 The Rise of the Witch King patch 2.02 version 8.3. In the round of 16 we will have a game between Platt from Italy against Trucky from Jersey on the map Westfold, Isengard against Elves. On the right side of the map we have the white elven player Platt from Italy and his opponent on the left side is the grey Isengard player Trucky from Jersey. That's the game number one. Panzer, welcome to the stream, everyone. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. We have two Malone trees up on the field for the Elven player Platt on the right side. This map was also chosen by the Elven player. Next game, the Isengard player Traki will be playing the Man of the West faction. And Platt, who is playing Elven faction for now, will be switching to the Engmar faction in the next game. Right, uh, two Malon trees into the barracks, so nothing too crazy. Pretty standard start over there from the Italian player Plat. Plat? <laughs> that sounds kind of rough. Two furnaces into the Uruk pit, into the third furnace, so pretty much the same start for both the players. Talking about this matchup first, I think Isengard has a chance to win against Elves. Even though some people are complaining about the Elven faction, but I think in the version 8.3, Elves got actually kind of nerfed. If you are wondering what happened to Elves, I will explain you. Normally, Elven faction was the only faction that can start with the Lorien Arches. You can defend yourself with them. And if this was not the case, you can also go for the Creep. However, the Archers against Creeps got nerfed big time. Not against the Troll or against the Varks, but against the Lairs. So you are not going to be able to deal any kind of damage to the Lairs anymore with Archers. The damage output on those Lairs will be pretty much the same as if you would try to take down with the Elven Archers uh, Furnace, for example. It would not be possible. Mirandi, welcome to the stream. Geld, welcome to the stream as well. Right, uh, on the other side, Isengard player is starting with some pikemen first. Gonna lead to the creep here. And he will be afterwards able to get this signal fire under his control as well. And pikemen are moving from the Elven player plat through the middle. I'm assuming he wants to get this troll layer down as soon as possible. Powerpoint wise, Warchant and Rallying Call was picked from the players. The second barrack super early, that's kinda interesting. Isengard player will be easily able to creep this. However, I need to also mention that creeping a troll is more rewarding than creeping a Warg player. That's really important to mention. Also, the amount of treasure and gold you are able to gain is more rewarding when you are able to kill, to kill the troll layer instead of the Warg layer. Alright, signal fire will be captured, however, this is something you can, uh, you know, make some advantage against elves. Especially because elven units, as you know, are able to get stealthed around the trees. This should reveal the shroud and give you more vision control. Okay, archers are here, Urukai are running right into the archers, they gotta be super careful. Valin Cole was used from the elven player. That's gonna be enough to force the Urukai back. And they are actually taking way too much damage here. Archers are chasing them down, they are quite mobile as well. They should be able to protect the Malon trees. Just keep chasing, because there is no way, or no reason actually to send them forward. Because like again, you know, the archers in Rise of the Witch King are almost dealing zero damage against structures. Could you make lower qu stream quality? Some people with me can't watch. I, well, I know, I couldn't. Because... I feel like that's the main problem of Twitch right now. I'm not a Twitch partner, so I don't have the option all the time. And I have only the option when there are not too many Twitch partners streaming right now. Which is being the case, obviously, because of the Corona, everyone is kind of sitting home and streaming. So, I was actually restarting my stream like five to six times, and it didn't change anything, so I gave up, guys, to be honest. So I'm really sorry. If you are not able to watch that live, you can watch the bots later on on the YouTube channel. But yeah, I'm sorry about that. Alright, uh, yeah, let's take a look into the co uh, current command points and power points from the players. Traki, the Isengard player on the left side, has only 350 command points, now 400 as the furnace came up. Nearly 3 power points collected. On the other side, we have 350 command points available for the Elven player Platt. He has almost 3 power points collected as well. He has uh, 2 battalions of archers, 1 battalion of those Lorien warriors. Um, Warchan was used as well, I don't know where. Was he using that for defensive purposes? I didn't pay attention. I was reading the chat. We have crossbowmen, three battalions actually, which is not bad. Because right now, 
and I don't think any soon we won't get any Revendal Lancers from the Elven player plat. That's why Crossbowmen are not gonna be a bad choice. But, you know, you can't compare it with the Elven Archers, with Isengard Archers, that's almost not possible. I mean, now you need to outnumber them pretty much, which is being the case right now. Two Archers against four, Isengard will be easily able to win that fight. Urukai will be used to pressure, but, you know, Elven player is always ready to defend with more and more Archers coming out of the double barracks. Which will be which will be giving him the advantage to spam more and more units. Isengard needs to make sure to expand at the very same time. Because as we know, Isengard is probably the best faction in Rise of the Witch King when it comes to collect those resources as soon and as fast as possible. You have so many ways to boost your eco. You have industry, you have devastation, you have Lurtz's pillage ability. Talking about Lurtz. I hope he's gonna be joining the battlefield pretty soon as well. No heroes on the field just yet, the Urukai are down. But I think he was able to take down one of the Malon trees, because if I'm not mistaken, there was a Malon tree around this area, which now the Alvin player Plat has to replace. And I'm assuming they are just building up for a big fight. Uh, Rallying Call is available, and Warchan is still on cooldown, so Isengard player has to be careful, you don't wanna look for a fight before your buff is ready. However, if Isengard player manages to collect one more power point, also during the fight, that can happen. He can go for the Creebine and debuff the enemy units. That's gonna give him some more combat stats. He should be maybe able to win the fight. Warshan is gonna be ready pretty soon. Couple of seconds left. I think he's gonna look for a fight. Crossbow man, they are running, which is smart. Urukai, they will be taken down in a second and a half. Nicely done here from the Alvin player using the trees and the passive from the Alvin units as they are getting selfed and they are fighting around the forest. Okay, he's not taking the fight, which is not bad actually, because this army can't damage the structures. What you can do now as Isengard here is just buy some time. Kill the time, avoid fighting, wait for the rallying coal to fall off, then use your war chant and then you can also win the fight and even take down some structures. But he's just taking damage for free here. A lot of units are taken down. And what you want to also do against elves, you want to fight in an open area. You don't want to fight when there are trees around. Warchant will be used. He has Creebine now ready, which again can be used on those units to debuff them. Which is going to be the case, but that might be too early. Never mind. Oh yeah, that's terrible. That's what I wanted to say. You don't want to use it that early. Because what happened, guys, is the Creebine got killed the second he was summoning them. Because, you know, you want to use it while you are fighting. So the elven units, they are not able to target them. Target the bats. Because there were no units nearby, the Alvin units were automatically attacking that, and that's really, really, really bad. Right, what's the flag of Drakey? Jersey, yes, you're right. Yeah. Okay, I mean, that was not a great fight here, even though, I mean, he could have waited a couple of seconds later, I think. Uh, he just lost too many units around this area, he should be just disengaging. Like mentioned before, he should just wait for the rallying call to fall off. Use your Creebine a bit more carefully, and then he could have probably won this fight. Lourdes is on the field though, I mean that's one of the heroes of Isengard faction that can change the outcome of the fights and outcome of the game. However, you don't want to feed too much and Isengard lost almost everything that he had on the field. That's really bad and Elven, Clare, Elven player uh, Platz can actually punish, punish him for that. Let's see if this is gonna be the case. Even though I need to repeat myself, this army from Elves, they are not made to siege. So they're not gonna deal a significant amount of damage to the structures. So he has only archers pretty much and Glorfindel now is on the field. Uh, getting now some more pikemen, but you need to have some swordsmen, more pikemen, or even some lancers joining the fight when you want to damage those furnaces from the Isengard's player, Traki. Eight power points collected. I'm assuming he's gonna go for the uh, Enshrouding Mist spell from the spellbook. This Malon tree will be taken down, and Isengard player is surprisingly spamming more and more crossbow men, which I am not very happy about. I would say maybe Warc Riders could be a better choice. Especially because the Alvin player doesn't have that many pikemen, first of all. And the second, and the main reason for me, is they are quite mobile. We can actually pressure the map a bit more. Uh, Lourdes was forcing Glorfindel back. He's now level 2. That's unlocking his carnage ability when he is gonna use the sword. There is a tower in the middle of the map, which is not bad. Like again, this army is not gonna be able to take down this tower any soon. And he's gonna go for the Vork Sentry, another defensive structure from the Isengard faction. 
If Lourdes gets level 4, that's gonna be the time when Glorfindel has to be super careful, unless he's gonna be level 3. Because with level 3 and his Bleed of Purity, he should be easily able to win that 1v1 fight against Lourdes. Okay, Miss will be used. Let, he's gonna commit, but there are some crossbowmen inside. All Isengard needs to do now is kill those couple of pikes in the front. And the, the tower will, you know, take care of the rest. Alright. Works, they're gonna be spawned. That was, by the way, Vision of Palance here. To reveal the stealth units, in my, in my opinion. The tower is gonna be taken down, I'm assuming. Glorfindel is retreating. Warchan will be used now from the Isengard player. Uh, the mist is not very greatly positioned, positioned, so they are not debuffing. I mean, this, this mist is not debuffing the enemy units. Lourdes is gonna put on the swords. Glorfindel is only level 2, he needs to be careful, he's running for his life. Lourdes is dealing, you know, splash damage, as you can see by yourself, and forcing the enemy units back. He's almost uh, level 4. Like, again, that's gonna unlock the cripple ability. And, you know, Glorfindel has to be super careful about that. Power point wise and command point wise, Traki went for all 5 power point spells from the spellbook of the Isengard faction. He has collected almost 5 more power points afterwards. So in total, he has 5, 10, 15 power points collected after starting with the War Chant. 725 command points. I think that's a great amount of command points and Isengard should be getting a decent amount of resources. That is a stage though, you don't want to fight around this area because your Creebine is not ready. That can, by the way, nullify the leadership the Elven units are gaining from this structure. On the other side, 610 command points available for the Elven player plats. He has 3 power points collected after having Rallying Call and in Shrouding Mist. So in terms of Power points and command points, actually Isengard is being slightly ahead, but, you know, that doesn't mean anything. Because now we have Mirkwoods coming on the field from the level 2 barracks. And as you know, Mirkwoods are the best archers in the game, Rise of the Witch King. They're gonna hit, yes, you you guess right, like a truck. <laughs> works, please, yeah, I would, I would say works are gonna be a great choice or option, but he's gonna go for the armory instead, so I think he's gonna try to get... You know, heavy armor purchase and potentially even fire arrow upgrades. The statue will be taken down. Lourdes might be getting... Uh, not not that much. It's almost level 4. And you will see what I mean now. Uh, if they're gonna try to take down this layer, that's gonna take ages. Because the damage output against this structure is heavily nerfed in the very current version of the patch 2.02. Uh, Vision of Palantir was used once again. By the way, it's also giving you movement speed and debuff, you know... Uh, revealing the shroud of the area. Uh, Glorfindel is diving in. We know he's dealing incredible amount of damage as splash damage. And now he needs to be careful. We don't want to fight against him basically when he's using that spell. Because not only he is maximizing his damage output and doubling the damage actually, but also his armor is getting doubled, which makes it incredibly difficult to take him down. But on the other side, Endmood has been taken down here. Nice pressure from the Isengard player. I like it. Level 4 unlocked from Lourdes. I don't know what he's doing. Is he gonna try to take down the fortress? It looks like it. I don't know about that, man. This should not be very easy. <laughs> With one pikeman and Lourdes, there we go. You know, nice try, I would say. But at the same time, he's gonna lose every single unit. Again, this is not the worst case scenario. Rallying Cole was used on those units. He's gonna be able to damage the fortress. And more units are coming. Oh, oh. Okay, Glorfindel is coming back. But Glorfindel again can be crippled down by the Lourdes as he's level 4 now. He might lose the fortress because he's over committing to that. He's gonna lose everything on the field. What is going on, guys? What is what a turnaround? What the actual heck is going on? And cripple him down so he can't do anything. Maybe that should be the case. Lourdes is still putting on the sword. He is really hardly committing to that fortress, which is super, super low. Warchan must use on those units as well. And Platt is gonna call it GG. What a way to end the game. Traki will be the winner of the game number one with the Isengard faction against Elves on the map Westfold. Holy moly. And yeah, Glorfindel is gonna follow Platt to the next, er you know, to the next realm. Rebind will be used. He's gonna leave the game, will be defeated. And the game number one will be won by the player from Jersey. Pretty interesting, I gotta say. Alright guys, the game number two, Man Against Angmar, is all about to begin this time on the map Ethan Mars Edited. Traki was playing the Isengard faction in the previous game on the map Westfold, in which he was able to win, by the way, as you can see at the top side of your screen, the scoreboard. Platt doesn't own the map, so we need to make sure to transfer all the necessary files so Platt 
is also be you know is also gonna get this map for another El Clasico matchup. Men against Engmar on this beautiful it is it map. First time we use this map in our tournaments, by the way. Alrighty. On the right side of the map, we have the white Engmar player Platt from Italy. And his opponent on the left side is the grey man of the west player Traki from Jersey. And yeah, that's also the first time I see this, you know, I see one player from this country. I didn't even know that this country is ex existing, guys, not gonna lie. You know, I was like, okay, Jersey, is this not USA? You know, New Jersey or something? But no, 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 this is actually a country. Two farms <laughs> from the man of the west player. And on the right side, we have two mills from the Engmar player. Um, yeah, this map got edited. So it edited, it's a bit different now. We don't have any towers. But we have our goblins at the top right. Bottom left, we have also uh, white creeps protecting this ins left and right, and we have also troll creeps here, and obviously also here. So that's pretty much it. Uh, two ins as a neutral structure you are able to capture, but besides that, pretty solid map. It's like more Engma map if you ask me because of the snow and stuff. Would you know switch the Engma team quite nicely because Solas wanted to do that. Solas wanted to two specific maps for each faction so each faction would be forced to play on a specific map but he he told me that he was not able to find any map that were actually made for the goblins you know but maybe he's gonna make them so we might have for the next good against evil tournament for each faction you know a special map would be great right uh, he has all of the kingsmen into the second hall of the kingsmen i see three four uh three Mills only, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not blind. Yeah, three mills only. On the left side, we have Archer range start from the Man of the West player. That's something we don't see that quite often. So I'm not sure if this is gonna be super effective or not. It looks like he's also gonna play super slow and super defensively. Powerpoint wise, Rallying Cole was picked from the Man of the West player Traki. And the Engma player didn't pick anything just yet, but I'm assuming he's gonna go for the War Chance anyway. Because the other options you have with the Engma are Snowbind or the Felwind. Both are great abilities, but I don't think that they are really great when it comes to start with them. Because Felwind is not gonna give you any benefits if you are not able to kill the enemy units afterwards. And you can't kill them without having the buff against buffed units. That's not gonna be possible. On the bright side, because of those archers, he should be able to keep himself alive. He needs to be careful that the Trollmaster is about to survive. That's, by the way, one of the great things about the Engma faction because your units they don't need to be level 2 to respawn over time because of the Trial Master. Trial Master is like a banner carrier pretty much. On the bad side if you lose the Trial Master even if your entire battalion is alive you will be losing your entire battalion afterwards. Warchan and Rallying Call was used. Um, this fight should be going in favor of the Man of the West but more reinforcements are coming. I might be wrong. It's gonna be forcing him back. He's gonna lose one Archer battalion over there. Um, and now we will have some frontline units finally. We need to make sure to kill the extrovers first, if I'm not mistaken. The Gandabats are also dealing decent amount of damage to the pikes in the frontline. And the pikes are also not as strong as they used to be in the version 8.0. Because of the version 8.0.1, the armor fix was a thing. Or 8.2 it was actually, sorry my bad. Um, you, could not, you cannot stake that much armor anymore. Let's be honest, you know, if you had pikemen before and you used the whole ground and whole porcupine formation, it takes ages to take them down. It's not anymore. MQS, welcome to the stream, dude. Right, the farm will be taken down. That actually is a not bad fight for the Engma player because of the double all of the Kingsman he has on the field. He keeps up the spam. Remember also that Platt, who's playing the Engma faction, is 1-0 behind, so he needs to win this game in order to reach the... Highbreaker game game number three on the map for Survival. So he has to win this game no matter what. Okay, more units are coming here. We have a well coming up for the Man of the West player, Trucky, to heal up those units. A couple of them are really badly damaged. He's actually able to push his opponents back, but so far Engmar was pretty much untouched. He's gonna go for the Troll and Wolf team. That's gonna give him the option and the chance to get those Troll Masters into the Wolf Riders. That's only one of the benefits you are getting from this structure. But later on, you can also, I mean, you can go for the Dire Wolf Packs pretty much immediately. 
You can go for the for the snow trolls, hill trolls. So you, you have many many different options with the structure. Um, yeah, he is actually going back, but it's a smart retreat in my opinion because he didn't lose anything, so he will be always ready to defend himself. Now we have also two Wolf Rider battalions on the field, and the fact that Man of the West has only a uh, almost dead battalion of pikemen scares me the most. He needs to definitely get some more pikemen, but I don't know if he knows. He doesn't know. He doesn't know what's gonna happen. We know what's gonna happen, guys. The Wolf Riders are coming. You know what's gonna happen. Barking will come. Right, nice trample here into the back line. I would have expected a bit more damage, but it's not a big deal. I mean, that's gonna force him to give up this outpost. The builder has to be careful up afterwards. The archers are getting trampled down. And that's, you know, that shows you why you should never be a greedy player. <laughs> you should not just like, okay, I'm gonna make more and more archers, and then you know, I will be good to go. Because that can easily count be that can be easily countered like this. You know, the magic number for me is like, you need to have one pike for every two battalions of archers, pretty much. If not two for two, you know. I mean, if you are good with micro management, I think, you know, have, having one pikeman for two archers is okay. But if you have like four or five battalions of archers, you need to make sure to have at least three battalions of those pikemen to protect them. Which was not the case. Stitcher will be taken down. There is a tower coming up, I don't know about that. Builder, I mean, he needs to cancel that now because he's gonna lose the money and the build afterwards. And yeah, he didn't cancel the structure, so that means the builder is gonna be goners. Now he's building a wall hub, if I'm not mistaken. Or you can click on it. The wall hub is coming up, but the builder is super low. Felmin has been used on those units, they are trampled down, and almost every single archer is dead. The wall packs are coming to take care of those pikemen. Man of the West players forced to retreat all the way back to his side of the map. I am really worried about this builder, he's super duper low, but he needs to, you know, be careful. I mean, it looks like Platt doesn't care about this builder because he want to put as much pressure as possible. In the meantime, we have 400 command, 425 command points available for the Man of the West player against 450 command points. We know Angmar is scaling super hard into the mid to lead scheme, and that's just the beginning of the game. Angmar is gonna become stronger and stronger, and after losing so many units, Man of the West player will be struggling. He gave a lot of power points. We have a lot of power points advantages here for the Angmar player plats. He has collected almost five more power points after having Warchant and Felwind. On the other side, nearly six power points collected after having only and exclusively rallying call ability from the Man of the West spellbook. Um, yeah, he's gonna go for the level two barracks now. I think he's gonna plan to get those tower guards to protect those archers. Um, and look at this, I mean, they are still off position, you know, that's a really big mistake, he's getting really hardly pan punished for that. The goblins and every other creep, I think, are still remaining on the field, yes, that's been the case, the whites are still there, the trolls are still there, and also the goblins are still there. So no one went for the creeps, all of the kingsmen, both are still only level 1, so he sticks with those trollmaster units, maybe Waldo could be a good transition. For this army, because this army is gonna get so much benefits from Hualzo, from the Engma hero, who is not on the field just yet. Because Man of the West doesn't have a way to, you know, debuff your units, to nullify the enemy leadership. So, Hualzo could be a great choice. Correct me, guys, in the chat if I'm wrong. Who naps watching you beyond standards? No problem. Naps will come to the stream. Was able to save the mill. Pushing back now. A lot of extra wars are here. Wolf packs, more pikemen are coming. On the other side, uh, there we go. The structure will be upgraded to level 2. That means we're gonna get. Ooh, that's a. I don't know about this pathway. You don't wanna be forcing yourself in a small area like this, I think. Maybe I'm wrong, but the extra wars are putting in some nice work. White special summon in the back line. And that's gonna be the surrounding. That's what I'm talking about. He's gonna run away now, but I think during this time he will be losing a lot of units. Okay. Ah, he's splitting them nicely though. But Warchant will be used now. He has not much left anymore. And unlike Archers, those Extrovers are also very strong against Structures. Level 2 Barracks is quite healthy though. 4500 health for both the Structures. I hope... Ah... He's gonna lose this anyway after getting only one ranger battalion out on the field. 
which is really bad. He's gonna lose the level to Barracks as well. And a great punishment here from the Engma player, Platt. That might be the game deciding move, by the way. Because now, for the next fight, if there will be a next fight, we will have also the leadership for the Hillman units. Which will make it even harder for the Man of the West player to win this fight. Rallying Call was used, and again a smart move from Platt to just disengage, wait for the hero to arrive. Then he can actually turn, because of the leadership. But it looks like he wanna just keep... he doesn't wanna take this fight. More units are coming. He has this spam power, he didn't lose a single mill around this area. This is a level 2 mill, this is a level 2 mill, this is a level 2, almost level 3 mill. Unlike the Man of the West player. He has only one level... never mind, there is also another one here. Two level, far, two level 2 farms. But that's pretty much it. He lost the level 2 archer range. He's taking the fight again in a, in a really bad, bad pathway, in my opinion. Because, look, the Engma players will be able to surround him. Tower guards in the front are quite tanky, though, with the Porcupine formation and the whole crown stance. They are not using that formation just yet. The tower guards able to take him down. We have already seen this a couple of times yesterday as well. You know, people are spamming more and more those tower guards. There is a tower up on the field, he needs to put those rangers or archers inside, that's gonna be the case. Um, I still do think that... Oh, what is going on here, what? Did you guys see that? There is a tower coming up here. Interesting. Um, in an in a area which is not gonna be very effective to have the tower at. Hmm, let's see how much damage or how much effective this uh, tower is gonna be. Um, I'm also wondering, and th there we go, here's a level 2 now. Here's a level 2 Hall of the Kingsman now. Um, that means you can go for the Black Numenorians or go for another upgrades. Level 3 and then go for the Dark Rangers. He's giving some time for the Man of the West player. Um, which might not be the greatest choice. Now the stable is up on the field. There are no heroes, however, from the Man of the West player, Traki. I feel like Platt is playing super safe, he doesn't want to take any risk, but so far he doesn't have to take any risk, I mean, but you know, um, which I'm really worried about is that the time is gonna, you know, that the time he's giving to the Man of the West player to reorganize his army. He has now multiple tower guards, one ranger battalion, more archers are coming, no never mind, he has no archer range anymore he didn't reveal it as well so he's gonna go for a stable instead um but and yeah Platt doesn't have many pikemen he has only one pikeman actually inside the army this is definitely not gonna be enough maybe we're gonna see the same mistake from Platt, like we have seen that before from trucky being greedy with the army not willing to go for the pikeman the treasure and the creep were was secured if i'm not mistaken by the man of the west player the tower is gonna force the enemy units away that's a big army here, but only one pikeman. So, if those Gondonites can actually get a great trample off, they might be able to do some work. I'm bad at this faction, bro. Give me some slack. What? Okay. I mean, you signed up with this faction, brother. <laughs> Alright, the uh, Trollstone Thrower is joining the fight from the Forge. So, it looks like Platt wants to go for a siege, which is smart, because you don't want to commit with this tier 1 units, with those weak units, for a tower. When there is an archer battalion inside. I mean, you will be able to take it down, but you need to sacrifice multiple units for that. Which is not very good and necessary, because now you can take it from a safe distance. Let's go slow, but sure, you know. Another tower is coming up. I mean, Trucky at this point is just spamming towers pretty much all over the place. But those towers, they can, they're gonna be completely useless once the troll stone tower is gonna be able to hit them. The damage output is not that great because they don't have to upgrade just yet. The ice shots you are able to purchase once your structure is at level 2. Costs 1000 resources and the upgrade costs 500, so you need to invest 1500 resources for that. Gondonites are down. Waldo is level almost 3. And remember, that's gonna be the time. Uh, this Brindage ability is like a pillage ability from Lourdes, so whenever you kill enemy units. What is, what is he doing? Okay. Right? He's grouping really nicely against this, by the way. This is not this what you want to do. <laughs> this <laughs> Look at this, guys. There's Fiesta. Oh! Long shooting coming. Felvind? Oh, Felvind? Okay. Felvind was not ready. 
Um, you don't want to be grouped against this uh, Stone Tower. Because he's gonna, you know, be able afterwards to hit multiple units. And knock them down. This tower is gonna go down for sure. For the next fight, Rallying Call is not gonna be available. And he does not have a statue around this area as well. Which is not a very great choice. No heroes. And we know heroes, they have a lot of impact on the game. Especially in the late game. Once they have reached some milestones with the levels. Now he's also getting cash from killing those units. Trollstone Thrower is knocking them down from a safe distance. He can, you know, take down slowly but surely every single structure from the Man of the West player Traki. The Barracks is gonna be the next target. He has enough protection to deny enemy units to reach those Trollstone Throwers. Now we have also Snow Trolls joining the fight from the level 2 Troll and Wolf team. But now he has a lot of Tower Guards. But they are not gonna protect <laughs> those ranges anyway, so what is going on? Theoden is joining the fight for the, for the leadership, so he has a level 1 leadership pretty much. Okay, Arm is being the target. He has, you know, his army is mainly based on Extrovers, and he has barely any pikemen. I don't know why he stopped making Gonda, Gonda Knights. He had only one Gonda Knight after the stable came up, and he lost that Gonda Knight around this area. And then he stopped making them. Theodin on a suicide mission. 93 gold. <laughs> That's how uh, very how weak Theodin is. Not even killing the king of Rohan doesn't give you that much cash. And that game should be over and we should be jumping right into the game number 3. Aragorn is here though. The king of the man. But he's only level 1 and I don't think that he has the power without the Anduril, the flame of the West Sword. To approach this army unless he's gonna be level 10 and then Waldo is gonna ask him you wanna stop us you and which army and then Aragorn you know is gonna say this army and BAM that would be great but he's only level 1 so that's not gonna be, be the case Mustafa welcome to the stream okay the farm is down Aragorn is almost level 2. Level 2 will be the time for Aragorn to shine. Because this is like Blade of Purity from Glorfindel, as you know. Does he have enough power points for the rebuilds? Nope, that's not being the case. Aragorn <laughs> will get knocked back with the Felvind. The Waldo is styling on him with the Moonwalk. Aragorn is running for his life. Atelas will be used for the heal. He is stuck, kinda. He can't move. He will have Blight being used. Gondor Knights are coming. You need to try to go to the backline. That's what you need to do. But more and more bites are coming from the flight. And GG will be called. The game will be over. And the score after the game number 2 will be 1-1. One, one. And the final game in the best of 3 will be on the map Forts of Eisen. Alright guys. The game number 3. With that the final game. The tiebreaker game in the best of 3. Between Traki against Flat is all about to begin. We have spinned our wheel, we have seen that Traki has to play Man of the West faction one more time against Engmar, but this time on the most known map of Battle for Middle-earth games, Forts of Eisen. As this again, you know, the Forts of Eisen is only possible to get in those tiebreaker games. So no player has the chance to pick this map. On the right side of the map we have the white Engmar player Platz and his opponent one more time. On the left side the grey Man of the West player Traki from Jersey. Pretty damn good. Two mills again from the Angma player. And two farms from the man. So we have probably Rallying Call and War Chant. He didn't pick just yet, but that's gonna be most likely the kiss. Okay, now he's gonna send the CIA. <laughs> yeah, maybe, you know. <laughs> when, when, when you don't see me for two days, you know what happened, guys. <laughs> Alright, uh, two farms... Three farms are coming up for the Man of the West player, so I think it's gonna be a delayed barracks or stable. Let's see which which one is gonna be. And yeah, on the right side we have two, three, four mills coming up for the Angma player Platz. Okay, so it looks like both players are starting economically. You know, it's pretty nice. And they're not gonna get punished for that because no player has any units coming out of the barracks just yet. And it's gonna be a stable. I don't think it's gonna be a stable delete, because stable delete would be, you know, the stable would be coming up much, much sooner. But it might be. So, what we have seen a couple of times, and which probably is gonna be the, you know, the case for most of the time, 
is that they make one horse, delete that and switch to the barracks and uh, archer range. He's gonna go for the barracks immediately. He can also leave it up and go for... Ah, oh, he's cancelled the barracks now. I think that's gonna be the case, but I might be wrong. Let's see. I mean, you can also keep the stable up. Because men stable or men cavalry are pretty strong, as we know. And Troll and Wolfdien is coming up. So Wolf Riders... It's gonna be actually a great thing here for the men of the Westplay because those Gondor Knights, they, kinda, they can actually easily fight them, you know? Why don't you add me to this tournament? Because you didn't sign up for this tournament. There was a sign up, we made the announcement on the Discord. And then we, we had a topic in game replays. People signed up. And you didn't. You know? That's, 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 that's why, my friends. Alright, uh, Dire Wolf Packs and um, Gun the Bad Warriors. Both are good actually against men. I mean, both are good for the men, not against men. Because the Gun the Knights, they can easily fight those Gun the Bads and also against the Dire Wolf Packs. Let's see if he's gonna get Pikemen, because that's gonna be necessary. Maybe he's gonna wait with the second Trollmaster. And we are looking on this one. Moving through the bot side though. And he's gonna go for the second Hall of the Kingsman at pretty much the same time. And again, Gandabad Warriors. Again, a great thing here. Where are you? <laughs> he's moving through the bot side. Okay. He's not demolishing the stable, but he's going for the barracks and archer range anyway. Um, Dire Wolf Packs, Gandabad, the second Hall of the Kingsman is coming up. More Trial Masters are gonna join the fight. Potentially extroverts now. There we go. That's gonna be the case. Uh, Gundabats. He didn't see this. He didn't see the calf just yet. He he's, he did. He did. He has two battalions of Gondor Knights, by the way. Um, going all the way back, which is kind of interesting. Because look, he, maybe he was expecting some pikemen to come to come, which is not the case. So if he would just move forward, he could easily you know kill those Gundabats and those extroverts. There is no protection. But it, instead, he's gonna try to save the farm. He will be able to save the farm. The wolf packs are actually putting in so much work against those pikemen. Pretty nice, I like it. They will be taken down now, though, from the fortress. They're only level 1, so they won't be recovering over time again. Anyway, I mean... Now he needs to get some pikemen, which is gonna be the case. So we are pretty much seeing the same thing from plats like in the previous game. You know? So nothing to new, but unlike, unlike Traki, who went for the calf at the beginning of the game. However, the calf was used pretty defensively so far, which I am not a big fan about. I would like to, you know, at least use one of them to put some pressure, to kill some mills. Because, let's be honest, offense is most of the time, not always, but most of the time the best defense. On the other side, it looks like Plaid is just, you know, going for more and more attacks. Warchan was used. Mm, that's a big army, so he might need some more units to defend this one. On the other side, Ralinko will be used offensively, which again, if I don't know if I, if I like this or not, he will be able to kill some structures, but he would be able to kill them anyway, because there is no protection. So maybe he should be using the rallying call for a defensive purpose. But on the on the other side, he has not many units to use rallying call on. So yeah, maybe that was the reason. What I don't like to see is also this micro management. Then you have multiple units, but not many of them are not able to attack. I I would say. If you have two Gondor Knights, you can split them, you know, one by one. And then pressure from both sides, especially when they are buffed, they are dealing a decent amount of damage. So that's something you can do. Mm, he's stalling quite nicely. Even though he lost his units, he didn't lose a structure just yet. He was also able to creep this work layer at the left side of the river. More farms are coming up for the men of the West play, which is pretty nice. On the other side, Gondor Knights are disengaging. I think you can still fight them. They are still being buffed, by the way, from the rallying call. Don't run into the pike, man! Yeah, oh, run. <laughs> no, he lost one battalion, unfortunately. Didn't watch, didn't pay attention. I mean, it's easier said than done, you know. As a, as a gamer, he needs to pay attention about so many things. So it can happen that you are not paying attention around this area. But running into the pikeman is always a big fields batsman for the player. Especially losing those calf. It's not only because of the time and money you are losing. Remember, they cost 500 each. But also the amount of power points your enemy is gaining from killing your calf is actually insane amount. He has 5 power points. Both players have the same amount of power points. 500 command points for man, 150 command points for the animal player. 
He has now Felwind, which again will be really effective against Gondor Knights. Can knock them down and then you can maybe finish them. But remember, he didn't demolish the stable, guys. With that being said, he can just, you know, go for more cap. Gonna go for the well now to heal up those allied units around. Uh, this farm is all about to hit level 2. Engmar will be planning to take this down, I think. He's quite slow. Um, yeah, but you know, the pressure is on the side from the man again. He's being under pressure all the time. The rush with the Gondor Knights, he was able to take down two mills. Which is not bad, but he needs to continue doing that. You need to continue pressuring all the time. Drawing attention. Forcing him to overextend here and lose some units around this area. Look, you can easily kill these two mills maybe. They are unprotected. He has almost no units. He has two trolls here though. But he's moving pretty much all the time forward. And what Platt is doing, and I think that's one of the most important things in the game also. You need to adapt your playstyle your to your opponent. You need to, you know, see that he's moving exclusively through the mid side. So you can easily counter that by moving through the top pathway or bottom. Then you can try to reach out to those mills, to those level 2 mill and this one which is all about to hit level 2. And if you take them down, he's gonna be in a much worse situation. He won't be able to spam that much units anymore because of the less resources he's gaining. And then he's gonna drop so low with the com command points as well. Build has to be careful, he's super low and will be taken down unfortunately. Looking for that... Hmm, yeah. He has no Gondor... Where are the Gondor Knights? They are just regenerating, I'm assuming. But why are you fighting here? When your... When your battalions are healing up. You don't want to fight that much outside. You don't... There is nothing to fight for, you know what I'm saying? I mean, if you lose a level 1 farm, who cares? But he's gonna call it GG anyway. And the game... And this series will be over. And uh, Platt will be moving to the quarterfinals. I was really impressed about the first game. That rush to the fortress was quite sneaky and super successful from Trucky. It was really nice to see. I really enjoyed that one. But unfortunately, he was not able to keep that pressure for the next, for the next uh, two games. And we're going to take a look into the current bracket of the tournament. This is how the bracket is looking like, guys. We have... Um, just seen in this game, Platt was able to win 2-1. Okay, in the first quarterfinal game, we will have Mirak uh, is a French player against Platt. Eternal, still waiting for his opponent. It's gonna be either Fairy or LSR. Uh, then we have this game between two players I can't, no, I can't pronounce, pronounce the names from. <laughs> They're gonna play against either now, here we will have Imperialists already waiting in the quarterfinals against either El Rohir or Ave Havi. Yeah, we have still one, two more games to go in the round of 16, then we will be ready with the quarterfinals. And by the, by the end of the next weekend, we should be also able to finish this tournament.